in you. In you. In you. Amen? Hallelujah. Why don't y'all just love on one another? True, genuine, brotherly, and sisterly love. Find somebody you don't know and grab their hand and introduce yourself. Amen? Well, praise God. God's in the house. You know what? Y'all brought him in here. Y'all brought him in here. Okay. Uh, remember last week? Uh, I believe they come expecting this morning. Amen. I just wrote that down. That's what, did you? I wanted to say that. <laughs> well, anyway, y'all did come expecting this morning. Thank you, Jesus. When you set that, I mean, you know, just like I said, that atmosphere can be set for you walking that door with your praise. You come expecting and you see God show up just like he did this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Kelvin's up here to keep me civilized, he said. And Pastor Todd asked if I was going to be civilized. And <laughs> There you go. That's Nikki no said that's no fun. I'm on Nikki's side. So, uh, I was coming to church this morning. Kelvin said, you're not nice when you do announcements. <laughs> I said, what do you mean I'm not nice? Not so like I you. brought Mr. Queen up here to help me today. <laughs> All right. Am I turning red yet? I don't know. Are you hot? Oh, yeah. Always <laughs> oh, hot. Oh, me. Okay. So, uh, I, yeah, God is just good. I'm telling you. Would you. I said I was eye candy last week, and then uh, Patrick came up and told me I was Sour Patch. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, nothing else to say about that one. Uh, <laughs> But there was one thing we sang that says, in your presence, fear is silent. That's right. And where's the presence? On the inside of us, on That's the inside right. of you. So fear has to be silent. That's right. We have to tell it to shut up. That's right. You know, I like telling fear to shut up. Okay, so now I'll get to the announcements. Softball signed up. I looked at that sheet this morning. There's a lot of names on there. Some said coach. We need two more. Nikki needs two more, Patrick. Uh, Patrick and your and uh, your son. Uh, Case? Cameron. I knew it was a K. No, they just gonna have fun, man. Come on. Well, there you go. Got you two. No. <laughs> Amy's laughing. She's gonna be home so anyway, so remember, there's no crying in softball. 
Uh, you need, we need, they need shirt sizes and your phone number. And they're making up jerseys. I'm excited to see what the jerseys will look like. It's going to be pretty cool. Practice begins in April. It's right around the corner. Not long, Patrick. And Kelvin, I asked him, I said, why do you say I'm not nice? He said, because you pick on Reggie. I was like, oh my gosh, really? Because I pick on Reg, Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. Reggie's your boy. Reggie's your boy. Y'all look alike. Uh, <laughs> Y'all do. Anyway, uh, we need still need some books for the lending library. <laughs> so, thank you. I grew up in the booms. So if I talk a little funny. Sometimes it's because of just, you know. No place called Horse Ridge. It was Horse Ridge in Indian Valley, Virginia. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> so I gave Stern a spelling bee one time. He was had spelling words. I'll tell this on myself. I'm sorry. Am I taking up too much time? Do you like me to shut up? Yes. <sighs> okay, so we'll, I'll save that one for a different time. But in the back, there's a, a thing for Pastor Todd's birthday. Oh. And I did not have anything to do with that. He, I don't think he believes me, but I really didn't have anything to do with that. It surprised me when I came in. Kelvin said, oh, my gosh, we didn't give Pastor Todd a card. I said, he didn't act like he wanted one, so I didn't get him one. But anyway. <laughs> now you know why I told her she's got to be nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm really trying to be nice. I am not. I think Nikki liked it. Try harder. Okay. So, uh, now come on, I want to tell that story because Stern is not here. But anyway, I don't care if he was here, I'll tell you. So, Reggie knows his story. Oh, Reggie, I said your name again, I'm sorry. But I was giving him his spelling words, he was spelling words, and he was, I don't know, kindergarten, first grade, it was the four letter word wash, W A S H. And I said, wash. And he goes, W A R S H. And I get really mad. I said, this is a four-letter word. I know you can spell it. It is four letters. I said, spell it like it sounds. I am W-A-R-S-H. And then I realized I was a hick. I was a hillbilly hick. I said, oh, well, sorry. I'm sorry. So I try not to say wash anymore. I say library. So <laughs> uh, anyway, um, okay, moving right along. Uh, baptism again. Woo, we're going to baptize again. That's good. April 17th. That's awesome. April 17th. Wash them sins right away with the name of Jesus. Praise God and baptism. Let's do it. Woo, that's exciting. I wonder if it's before or after softball practice. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we need some help with the junior youth and hostess and ushers. So sign up, people. I see people available out there. Sign up. Get involved. Do something. Amen. We can do it. We're all a part. Yes, and we're all a... We learned that last week, too. That's right. We're a glorious church. We're a family. Guess what's coming up July 31st? Does anybody know? Drum roll. Pastor Todd and Nikki know. 40 years celebration of Christian Girl Summer. You've been here the whole time, Kelvin. Almost the whole time. No, we haven't been here the whole time. But 40 years, what a celebration that's going to be. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done at Christian Girl Center in 40 years. And the best is yet to come, y'all. Hey, hey, the best is yet to come. So I bless y'all in the name of Jesus, Pastor Todd, unless you, you have anything. No, no, you killed it all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's something when you can, uh, it's like a concert. Anybody ever been to a concert and they yell out the cities there and you hear the woo? Now, when you get Horse Ridge, Indian Valley, getting some, getting some respect from the back back there somewhere, that's something. That is something. You know, the other funny thing is, Patrick, I, I don't think Kelvin even knows what Sour Patch is. <laughs> oh, glory. That's true. I knew that was true. <laughs> he might take it as a compliment. You know? 
How are y'all today? You know, it's great to have fun. I believe it's a good place to, to laugh because laughter is good medicine. Amen. Laughter does your body good, does your heart good, your health good. And so I just encourage you any opportunity to just laugh, enjoy life, even if you got to laugh at yourself sometimes. And I do that often, believe me. Listen, I want to encourage you today. How many want to be encouraged today? I want to start with the reading of the word, so I won't make you stand, but just listen. This is right out of Psalm 46, and this will encourage you, I believe. It says, God is our refuge and strength. We know that, right? We can count on God being our refuge and our strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear, amen, we will not fear, we will not fear, Fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. We will not fear. And that's what I want to encourage you in today. Just like Teresa testified to. You know, do not fear. Although everything is falling apart around you. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Do not fear when you see all hell breaking loose all around you. Don't fear. Don't believe the lies. Don't get sucked into that lie of the enemy that all is gone, all is given up. All is worthless. All is, it doesn't matter what you do. You're not going to make things better. Don't give in to that lie. And do not fear. Trust God. Trust Him. Trust that relationship you have with Him through the blood of Jesus Christ. Understanding, I say it almost every Sunday, understanding who you are in Christ. When you understand and know the covenant you have, through the blood of Jesus, you will not fear. You will not fear. Amen? So I encourage you today. You know, and if we're going to see ourselves as the glorious church, as I've been talking about, we're going to have you, 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 us, you and us together. We're going to have to change our perspective. And that's why... That's why Nikki, I believe, got the vision to put these windows up here. And if you remember her message when she talked about looking through, looking at the world through a different window, changing our perspective of things, changing our perspective. You know, I had a, um, I meet with this group of pastors Wednesdays. We have coffee and just chat. And uh, one pastor came in late, and he was he was a little flustered, you could tell. And uh, you know, he sat down. He says, "Man, I just." On my way over here, you know, I think I hit every single red light. And then I got behind this person that was just, I mean, just, I mean, like slow. If they're in a 35, I mean, they must have been doing like two. And he said, and then I went to make a turn and I saw somebody was, you know, wanted to go and was, I could tell they want. And so he said, I waited on them. And then the person behind them took advantage of that. And so they went as well. And I just, he said, but you know what? As I pulled into the parking lot, getting ready to come out and meet you guys, he said, at least there aren't any bombs going off around me. And he said these words. I had to change my perspective. I had to change my perspective. We need to change our perspective. If you get in a situation, don't let that situation dictate your perspective. You're in control of you. We're free will beings, right? That's what dif differentiates us from the angels. We are free will beings, able to make our own choices, able to change our perspective when it calls for it. Free will beings. It, uh, I think it's 1 Corinthians. I think it's 14. That's what I broke down, so I think it's there, but... Uh, I didn't go back and look, so I'm not sure. But I believe it's in 1 Corinthians 14 where it says that the spirit of a man, the, your inner man, the spirit of man is subject to the man. I think it says prophets. 
talking about the spirit of the prophet being subject to the prophets, but I think we can apply that to us. Our inner man, our spirit man is subject to us. We are a free will being, so we can control how we see things from that perspective. Amen? And that's what he did, and I thought that was interesting because we've been talking about that here as well. So let me ask you this question, and this is the direction I want to go in because I believe it's going to bless somebody here, and I believe that uh, there are people, I believe every one of us deal with this situation that I just gave an example to about that pastor. Some of us react a little bit better than others. Some of us get a little more upset when they get behind someone doing two miles an hour. Not mentioning any names, but I'm staring straight at him. But. <laughs> Amen. Preach it, man. Preach it. <laughs> Uh, hey, well, I guess this is the time for calling people out. I don't know. I mean, Reggie, it was you, and then, uh, you know, and then there's Kelvin, and we got, what do we got on Teresa? Uh, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll do like we talk in our, uh, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. Let me ask you a question. Why do you think 1 Corinthians chapter 13 says to believe the best of everyone? Do y'all know that chapter? The love chapter? 1 Corinthians? Verse 7 puts it like this. It says, love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without weakening. I believe, listen, it's when, when, you, when, the, when the Scripture says to believe the best of every person, I believe it's to, to your benefit to believe the best of every person. You know, if you have ought against me about something, and, and you don't tell me what that is, do you think that bothers me? No, because I don't know about it. It doesn't. You know, uh, uh, let's take it back to the driving situation. You, when you get upset with that driver that cuts you off or is driving 13 miles an hour down Piney Woods every day that you try to get out, and, uh, you know, do you think you being upset about that bothers them? No. No. Trust me. Our little friend that drives 13 miles an hour down Piney he don't care. He could care less. He probably don't even know that he's doing that. But who does it upset? It upsets you. We're to believe the best of everyone to the benefit of you so you don't become overwhelmed in oppression. I believe it opens the door. I believe it opens the door. When you get upset, when you don't believe the best of every person, I believe it opens the door for mm, evil spirits. I do. Evil spirits? Well, what do evil spirits have to do with me believing the best of every person? Because you open that door. You give them an opening to come in. Are you sure you're talking about? Yep, yep. Evil They're real. And they're probably more prevalent than you realize. Now that shouldn't put any fear in you because you have the power over any evil spirit. Amen? But we have to apply our authority. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. And I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Ephesians chapter 6. And this is going to be out of the New Living Translation. Verse 11 puts it this way. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. All strategies of the devil. Now listen to this part. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, why? Because these things exist and they are prevalent, 
Put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. We need to change our perspective from our natural eyes and what our natural eyes see to our spiritual eyes and what our spiritual eyes see. It's a, we, it's a spiritual battle. And when you do things like that, when you... When you get upset like that and, and anger comes over you, and I'm not talking about righteous anger, I'm talking about stupid anger. I'm, uh, that's not nice. That's not nice. Anger that shouldn't be there in a situation. Yeah. We have to change our perspective. We have to change our perspective. Why else would Paul have shared that with the Ephesians? Why would you need the armor of God if not for spiritual warfare and to resist tremendous evil all around us? We need to believe the best of everyone so we don't give way to that evil and instead practice righteousness. Practice righteousness. Turn to James chapter 3. James chapter 3. And again, this will be out of the New Living. Let me turn it over there. If I, I may want to share a little bit after. James chapter 3. James chapter 3, verse 13, it says, If you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. For jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For, whatever, for wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder evil of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. Just like my pastor friend, yielding to those people coming through their life. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace. Oh, and get this. They'll reap a harvest of righteousness. A harvest of righteousness. Don't you want a harvest of righteousness in your life? A harvest of understanding who we are in Christ. A harvest of our right standing with God the creator of the universe, then start being a peacemaker. Start being a peacemaker. Give up that selfish ambition. Give up those jealousies. Give that up. Give way to the person who cut you off. Let it go. Because when you keep all that stuff in, when you harbor that stuff, and it, it can, if you do it too long and, and over time and constantly, it can create a root of bitterness in you. And that root can grow deep. And that root of bitterness will give way to these evil spirits that I'm talking about that will influence you. But we have the armor of God to resist in that day of evil. Amen? Start being a peacemaker in your life. Be a peacemaker. I'm telling you, you should go after peace with every fiber of your being. When a situation presents yourself, you should just take a minute to reflect, step back, and, uh, you know, hey, I love those bracelets. When we were helping out with the youth here at Christian Growth Center was when those, those bracelets came out, the WWJD bracelets that everybody wore. I mean, I, they, everybody wore those things. You know, it was just a, a, a physical reminder of, 
to take a step back and if you get in a situation, you know, what, what would Jesus do? That's what they stood for, WWJD. What would Jesus do? Take a step back and let peace just flood your being and act out of that peace. Be a peacemaker. Be a peacemaker so that you can have a harvest of righteousness in your life. Turn to Matthew chapter 5. I'm trying to encourage you today to change your perspective about life going on around you and, and to uh, be aware that there are spiritual things happening around you. We get so, I believe, distracted by this physical world and the things that we see with our eyes and the things we hear with our ears. Uh, we get so distracted by the natural realm that it, 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 it takes over the realm of the Spirit in our life almost sometimes. And, and I'm here to encourage you that God has given you everything that you have need of to battle in the realm of the Spirit. To enjoy that peace, that peace that passes all understanding that Jesus died for. John 10.10, 10, we say it all the time, you know, who comes to kill, steal, and destroy? The enemy. The enemy is the one that, if you've got destruction going on in your life, it's not created by God. It's by the enemy of your soul. Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. He wants you to live an abundant life here on this earth. He doesn't want you to cower in fear over, you know, hearing of all kinds of stuff happen. There's bad stuff in the world everywhere. There's going to be bad stuff. Guess what? It's, it's even going to get worse as we get closer to the return of Jesus. You can count on that. You can count on bad stuff happening all around you, but you can also have protection against that through the blood of Jesus. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 says, Blessed, this is out of the Amplified, so it's going to be a little bit different. Blessed, spiritually calm with life joy. Spiritually calm with life joy joy in God's favor are the makers and maintainers of peace for they will express his character and be called the sons of God oh to that just hit me right there to that we're to express the very character of God how do we express the very character of God. I mean, He gives us His Word, His written Word, and He, he puts stuff down. And when we read it and when we talk about it, when we hear it in our ears, do we believe it? I mean, and do we operate in those things? I'm just thinking of the, you know, the fruit of the Spirit, you know? How do we express... <laughs> How do we express God in our life? Well, He's told us. I mean, do you, do you operate in love? Do you have joy? Is there peace? Are you patient? Are you kind? Are you faithful? Are you gentle? Do you have self-control? Do you have control over the free will being that you are? This is how we express His character through things like this. So we have to change our perspective. We have to change our perspective about everything. You know, sometimes you get, and that's where I believe, uh, uh, you know, where it says that the traditions of men make the word of God of no effect. We get in such a rut, rut of tradition sometimes uh, that we can just be, you know, uh, like going, we've, we've, we've made this analogy before, a rut, right? A rut. You ever seen a rut in the mud? I mean, it's just a, a hollowed out place. That, that, and, 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 and you can stay in that rut so long. You Have you ever seen tributaries that feed into, for instance, the Grand Canyon? Who's been to the Grand Canyon? Anybody? 
then you've seen these tributaries that feed, and the Grand Canyon itself is an example of this, where erosion has eroded it so deep down that, that those, those sides go so deep down. You can stay in that rut for so long that you erode away, and the walls have gotten so high on both sides that you can't see what really is out there. You're just seeing what's in your rut. The traditions of men making the Word of God of no effect. Oh, Lord, but Christ has set us free. Turn to Galatians chapter 5. Let me share this. And this is going to be out of the New Living. I'm bouncing back and forth, I know. Y'all can follow. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians. Verse 1 says this, So Christ has truly set us free. Are we free? Are you free in Christ? Is there a freedom in your life? So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free. If you got born again and you believe in Jesus as as your Lord and Savior, He has set you free. But it's saying here, make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Listen, listen, Paul is saying. I mean, he's putting some emphasis on this. Listen, I, Paul, tell you this. If you are counting on circumcision to make you right with God, then Christ will be of no benefit to you. I'll say it again. If you are trying to find favor with God by being circumcised, you must obey every regulation in the whole world law of Moses. And circumcision versus uncircumcision, it was just that, that, that covenant that Abraham cut with God in the beginning there, and, and, and that was the sign of the covenant, uh, that you were honoring that covenant as circumcision. We could just say the law. The law. For if you were trying to make yourselves right with God by keeping the law, you have been cut off from Christ. You have fallen away from God's grace. But we, say I, who live by the Spirit eagerly wait to receive by faith the righteousness God has promised to us. For when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, there is no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is important is faith expressing itself in love. In love. Faith expressing itself in love. Faith expressing itself in love is what a glorious church looks like. Expressing your faith through your love. How how does the world recognize us as the church? By our love for one another. By our love for one another. Everything that Jesus did and accomplished in the earth was rooted in deep love. Love for the Father and love for you and me. Ought we not do the same? Ought we not love the Father and love our fellow man, mankind? When we do this, we will shine forth as the glorious church. The glorious church. But we have to change our perspective. We cannot do it out of tradition. We cannot do it out of habit. We cannot do it out of obligation. We cannot do it because your grandma did it. we got to do it (laughs) by faith in love. Faith in Jesus and His sacrifice. Amen? We've got to to change our perspective. We've got to change our perspective. Knowing that if God is for us, who can be against us? Who? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing. A thousand. A 
at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. It shall not come near you. I'm telling you, church, we've got to stand on our faith in Jesus and his sacrifice and what he sent in his word to tell us and in his Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of us and leads and guides us every single day. Every single day. The one that gives us the answers out of every problem, every situation that you could be in. I believe that's why I believe the, the Spirit had me pray for people that just feel like they aren't good enough, but you are good enough in Jesus. You are good enough in Jesus, and you need to establish yourself in that. You need to get a revelation of that. I'm telling you, a revelation of your righteousness will do more for you than reading the entire Bible back to front 400 times. Revelation of your righteousness. Your right standing with God through the blood of Jesus. Who you are in Christ. A revelation of that will set you free. And then we want to make sure you stay free by reminding you constantly if not every Sunday, if not more than every Sunday, reminding you constantly who you are in Christ and the victory that He bought and paid for with His own blood. The victory of your healing. The victory of your deliverance. The victory of your freedom. You know, we fight wars in this earth so that people can be free. Jesus fought the battle and won already. You are free. You are free. You need to live your life in that freedom, in light of that freedom. Not in fear, not recoiling at everything that comes. Boldly profess in the name of Jesus and trust him in his sacrifice. Victory. You have the victory. We're going to do that song again, praise team. We're going to do victory again before we leave. And I want you to have such freedom to praise and worship him in that song. I give you permission to be free to worship Him when we sing that song again. Because I believe there is freedom. Oh, freedom when we allow praise and worship to just saturate us. Saturate you. Saturate you. In fact, let's just do that song right now. I've got a few other things I want to share before we leave. But I really want to do this song. Victor's Crown. That second song we did. Yeah, Victor's Crown. Victor's Crown. Victor's Crown. Come on up, Shirley. There's only two of you, so we need all the help. I'm going to stay up here if you don't mind. All right. But I want y'all to worship in freedom today. I believe that that song, there was, there was an anointing on that song this morning. And I believe it hasn't left that, that, that it's going to just, man, it's just going to, it's going to overwhelm you as we sing, as we sing. Go ahead, Danny. Hallelujah. You are all 
was fighting for us. Heaven's angels all around. My delight is found in knowing that you wear the victor's crown. You're my help and my defender. You're my savior and my friend. By your grace I live and breathe to worship you. At the mention of your greatness, in your name I will bow down. In your presence, fear is silence, for you wear the figure's crown. Let your glory fill this temple, let your power overflow. By your grace and living, breathe to worship you. Oh, 
shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every heart thing was gone. Every soul shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every heart thing was gone. Every soul shall be broken. Those chains of poverty, those chains of oppression, those chains of depression must fall off of you at the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What a glorious, glorious, glorious day. I pray that you are set free today. And like we read about, you stay set free. Amen? But know this, if, you, if trouble comes, if trials come, if things happen, you have an advocate who is interceding on your behalf. And he loves you. He loves you. He loves you so much. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You set free. You're free. You're free indeed. You're free indeed. You're free indeed. Who else needs to be set free today? Who else needs to be set free today? Huh? Oh, glory. Glory. You're all free. Amen. You're all free. You're all free. I believe that. I believe that. I believe that. I believe that. Yes. Yes, please. Um, for years, um, I've heard people say the sound of the house. Y'all heard Pastor Robin Trisha years ago. They would say, you know, this is the sound of the house. That's the sound of the house. And um, I so appreciate you preaching, Jesus. I so appreciate that. I know Pastor that preach and never say the name of Jesus. So thank you. And God spoke to me and said, you're hearing the sound of the house. It's Jesus. That's the sound of the house. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. We've been talking and searching and believing for the sound of the house. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> How simple is that? Oh, my, my, my. My, my, my. Jesus is the sound of the house. That name should resonate in your heart. Oh, shine forth. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Well, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we have the name of Jesus. I thank you that we do preach, praise, and believe in the name of Jesus in this place. I believe that as we point people to the cross. Lives will be changed. 
situations rearranged. And the glory of the Lord shining through. Bringing light on every situation. Bringing light to our own lives and our hearts. Helping us to change our perspective of how we see the world around us. Trusting in the finished work of Jesus. So I just pray this morning that every person under the sound of my voice would put their trust in that finished work. The finished work of the Christ. The finished work at Calvary. When He was hanging on that cross and He said, It is finished. What a glorious day. What a glorious day. Let us always, always remember that sacrifice. Let us always remember His broken body, broken for you. Let us always remember His shed blood, shed for you. given us covenant, a new covenant. Not built on rules and regulations and do's and don'ts, but built on the grace of God. Oh, His grace that abounds. Oh. It's that grace that the gates of hell will never prevail against. It's that grace in your life that keeps you putting that foot forward one after another. It's that grace that comes alongside of you and holds you up when you feel you can't stand any longer. It's that grace that wraps around you in that moment of oh, tragedy and pain and hurt. It's that grace that lifts you up out of that miry clay and places you on firm, solid ground. The rock of Jesus. Let us never forget and always remember His sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, if y'all want to sit for just a second, I got a couple things I just want to share before we leave. and They're important things. Uh, and we will have a, a time of offering as well. But I've got an exciting announcement. I've got two exciting announcements. And um, I don't want this. Um, I might be beating on the stand or something. The first announcement is that next week, next Sunday, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, my face doesn't show how excited I am, but uh, there are three boys in our family, and I'm the youngest of, of three boys. And, and the middle brother uh, called me up the other day and said, uh, he said, hey, I don't know. If, if I can do this or if you even allow this kind of stuff, he said, but God just dropped something in me and and uh, I, I just don't know. You know, he kept beating around the bush. I'm like, great, just, his name's great. He said, well, there's this thing that's been stirring inside of me and I didn't really know how to go about it. And then when I watched Nikki's message on the windows and changing her perspective, it just gave me confirmation. He says, I believe I have something that I need to share with your congregation. I said, well, come on, brother. <laughs> so uh, he's going to come next Sunday and share what is on his heart, what God has laid on his heart. And so I'm super excited about that. I mean, 
Uh, yes, because he's my brother, but more so that, that God is moving and, and touching people's lives. And when we lend ourselves to the Holy Spirit, I believe it gives uh, hope and direction to others as well. So I'm excited for what he has to share. So I want you all to share in that as well. So I hope you come expecting and drawing from, from him. And uh, he's not a, you know, uh, a pastor per se. I mean, he does a lot in ministry uh, in the background and stuff. And um, but uh, I'm excited to hear what he has to say. So that's my first big announcement. And then I had the honor and privilege to make a second announcement that we're going to have another wedding in the house. Y'all want to know? Yo, everybody's looking around. Well, I don't know. They look pretty old over there. Miss Leslie Dove is engaged and will be getting married. To Mr. Wes Poth. Wes Poth. You've met him. He's been here a couple times. So uh, we're all excited about that. I, we don't have an exact date yet. We'll, we'll keep everybody apprised. But uh, we just, she wanted to, she, she wanted me to announce that. I, don't know. I wanted Mike to announce it, but, you know, Elaine said, no, nah, he'd cry too much. He wouldn't be able to say it. <laughs> But uh, I am so excited for you guys, and I just, uh, man, that is just, that blesses my heart. I mean, to see union coming together like that, and uh, it's just, you know, marriage is an institution that God created. He created marriage. He created that institution, and, and uh, so to see two people honoring that is just blessing. So congratulations, Leslie, very much so. Well, that's all the exciting news I've got, I guess. But uh, before you leave, we want to give you an opportunity to give. So uh, ushers are ready, and if I believe you've prepared your heart, as we always say. And don't forget our missions bowl. I want to thank you all for uh, stepping up because our missions figures have been